week this storm started to roll in and the clouds were really really nice and it looked like the sunset was going to shape up to be spectacular so I checked the TPE app they have this new thing a relatively new thing called Skyfire that gives you a percentage of a chance that the sunset is going to be awesome what I pay attention to is anytime it says it's over 80% because then there's a pretty good chance that it's gonna happen last minute I decided that I would go up to skyline skyline is this road that stretches from San Jose to San Francisco along the the Santa Cruz mountains separating the Bay Area from the coast and there's just a bunch of little spots that you can pull out and trails to hike and all sorts of cool stuff and so I thought I'd go up there I came around the corner to this opening where you could see the Pacific Ocean way off in the distance. I really loved the layers in the hills and I loved that there was a couple trees. I was hoping the sun would break through the clouds and blast some light on the hills. That never quite materialized but the sky lit up. It was so good. The sky was so bright and the foreground was so dark that I ended up bracketing about two stops. I was using my Canon 70 to 200 f4 lens on my Sony a7R ISO 100 70 millimeters. I opted to shoot at f8 so I could get a really sharp image. Exposures were 1 15th, a 60th, 1 25th of a second. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start, and I'm just gonna see what happens. I'm gonna merge this into an HDR by using Lightroom. I'm gonna see what happens. Nice, so it's finally done and let's see what it did. Ugh, I hate this. I hate this too. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like what it did. So I'll do some basic processing here in Lightroom and then I'm gonna bring it over to Photoshop and manually blend the layers myself. All right, so I'm gonna start with this middle exposure. The colors that I'm seeing here are not nearly as vibrant as they were when I was standing there. I don't like how this tree's encroaching on the side I knew that when I shot the image, but I wanted this tree on this part of the frame. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to clone that out. And I wanna bring in some of the layers that you could see here, the hills in this lighter exposure. With that being said, I'm going to just start moving the sliders around as I think they need to be. In this image, I'm really focusing on the sky. I hate bumping the saturation, but I'm gonna do it just a hair. I always like to give a little bit of contrast with a tone curve, Let's see what the lens curve does too. Bueno, bueno. All right, I'm pretty happy with how that sky looks there. I'm literally just going to copy these settings here and bring it over into the next one. And see what I'm focusing on in this is just this layer of the hills down here. And I'm actually gonna bring it down a lot because I don't like how bright it is here. I wanna make out that there's hills down there. And then on this last one, it's really just focused on the sky. So there's here's my three images. Really, I bet I could probably get it with just these two, but I am going to bring all three in and see what I get. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this be my base layer. Probably won't even use this layer now that I see it in here. I think all I need is my base layer. So I'm gonna call this my base, and I'm gonna call this my mountains. And you are garbage and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into my channels and those luminosity masks and I'm gonna select one that will best make me a selection of these hills in the front mega darks I think does it best it all it also does this tree uh, which I don't think I like I, I think I just want the hills but I'm gonna look at that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna command click this and it's gonna select all the areas in white I'm gonna come back over to here and on my mountains layer I'm actually going to apply that mask by clicking the little Japanese flag down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go into the mask and I can do some detailed work here, again, using luminosity masks. So I'm gonna go into the mega darks and I'm going to command click again. I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna click on this layer and I'm actually going to option click on it so I can just see the layer here and I'm just gonna paint these trees black.
much better. To give it a little boost, I'm gonna come over to my channels and I'm gonna command click on my lights and then I'm gonna come back and just do a command J. What that does is it creates a new layer taking the 50% brights as you can see here. Option click on this. You can see that it's just selected the bright parts of this image. What's really cool is when I go back and if you take this layer and you either overlay or soft light usually works best. You can see it just bumps the color up. It's really a cool simple trick. I always go back and forth between overlay and soft light. Overlay on this one is a bit more vibrant, which I like. If it ends up being too much, you can always back off the opacity of that layer and it'll bring down the intensity of it. So now I have to tackle how to get rid of this tree. And I'm not very excited about it because it looks like a pain in the butt. I'm gonna play with the crop just a bit. See if I can just get rid of that those dang trees. Much better. Done with that. So there's my cleanup, my new crop. I'm actually gonna opt to sharpen this thing up a bit more. Just looking at it, I love how sharp the tree is, but I wanna make it really stand out without sharpening the sky. There's another really cool trick that I use a lot uh, using luminosity mass that I'll show you. I'm gonna create a flattened image here, and it's just gonna be sacrificial, but I'm gonna go to other. I'm gonna do high pass. You don't wanna go too high on this. It gets like crazy way up here. It just kinda brings out some of the detail. I'm actually going to stick around like five-ish. And then if you change this to an overlay, it sharpens it up. But what that also does is it adds it to the sky. I'm going to create a mask by using the luminosity mask that we created. So I'm going to look for one with some good contrast. This will work best. So I'm going to command click it. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to create the mask and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to go filter, stylize, find edges. So let me do this. I'll option click on it. And so it's, it's found the edges of this mask. Mask. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my adjustments and my levels and I'm just really going to try and make it to where I only see the edges on this thing. Make it look like a, an outline, like a drawing of that tree. So you can see how it's really only on the tree and the peak of that mountain. And that's now my, my new layer mask. But the problem is, is it's backwards right now. It's sharpening everything except for the edges of the tree. While I'm clicked on that mask, I can do uh, command I for inverse and now it made it to where only the white part is being sharpened, which is perfect. It's very subtle, but you can see as I turn it on and off the difference that it made in that tree and just really making it pop. And the last thing that I'll do is just add myself a nice little vignette. I do that in Photoshop by drawing an ellipse and then I will do a shift command I and that makes it to where it selects the outside. And then what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll do a curves adjustment. Now this layer becomes dispensable and I can feather it to where it's not just a very harsh transition. If you option click on it, you can see the feather on it. Something like that. And then if I go over to here, I can drag it down just on this layer to darken the edges. Be good with that vignette. And that's it. Thanks for hanging out. If you love this content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. Oh, and don't forget to click that thumbs up too. See you soon.